and I'm Uma and I'm not 70 years old. <laughs> Welcome. Today, Kedar and I are going to talk about a very interesting and uh, fun project with you. And I'm going to let Kedar tell you all about it. I loved to play video games when I was five. But it was really hurting my eyes, so my mom said the Wii broke. And Did it really break? No. And so I was like fighting and saying, no, that's not true, why ya? Yeah. And who won the fight? Mommy. And she said, this is not the end. You can make your own video games and play your own video games. And so what did you do? How did you make your own video games? I got a program called Scratch and it's made by MIT. So for those who don't know what MIT is, it's actually a free platform that allows you to uh, teach your young kids eight and above how to code. But Gator started it when he was five, so that tells you that you don't have to really worry about the age. As long as kids know how to read, they can start to plug and play with that app. So what did you do with Scratch, Kidar? Well, I became so good at it that I started to take it to Maker Fairs and teach it. And at my very first Maker Fair in Washington, D.C., there came a man called Mr. Patrick. And he said, what you're doing is great. You're teaching our friends who can see how to code. What if you teach our blind friends how to code? That would be even more awesome. Oh, and I became super code man because I not only learn from people, but I also teach. I got super code powers. And what does super code powers let you do? Well, it gives me the power to do code. I'll tell you what I do in code. I make stories, game, art, music, science, history, all sorts of cool things that I love. So when Mr. Patrick told you to come about with an idea to teach our blind friends how to code, what did you do? Well, I tested Scratch and I saw, oh, my blind friends cannot feel it. And I mean, they can't feel a computer. So I realized Scratch is now working for me. Okay, now we'll make a puzzle book. So I made a puzzle book. And you know, I have the story, Cody Locks and the Three Bears. What is Cody Locks? I know Goldilocks. What is this all about? Well, you know the story of Goldilocks. So what we're doing is we're making Goldilocks teach code. And since she's teaching code, her name is Cody Locks. So tell us more about Cody Locks. What does she really do? And how does your puzzle book work? Well, I'll tell you a little bit. There are blanks and you have to fill in the missing code pieces. And did that really work to teach your blind friends how to code? I thought it would work great for our blind friends, but it worked great for our friends who can see. But our blind friends, well, they felt the wrong pieces and were putting the wrong pieces in the wrong places. Ah, so what did you do next? Did you just decide that that was it? I'm Super Code Man! So I had a Super Code idea! How about a 3D board game to teach code? It's called Storybot! What does 3D really mean? What do you mean by that? You don't only feel objects, but you can tell what objects they are, so that way you put the right pieces in the right places. Cool. So how did you go about making this game? Was it easy, hard? What were your challenges? I'll tell you a story. It's called Glue vs. Magnet. So one day I saw, oh, my characters are falling off just like a waterfall. Why, why were your characters falling? What were you doing? Just by touching it, they were like triple, triple. So I had to find a way to stop that. I thought about glue, but glue will stick it forever. So it's glue the troublemaker. So what did you do? Then I thought about magnets. I realized, oh, magnets stuck on the fridge and came off when I wanted it to. So if 
I stick it on my board, it should work. Great, now how did you actually make your board 3D? How did you make that touchable? Well, I first tested a regular, regular normal board and I closed my eyes. I felt it and I could not feel anything on the board. It was just drawn. So at this point we gave Kadar a cushion to touch which had some embroidery on it so he could feel stuff. I closed my eyes and I felt the cushion and I realized, oh, I can feel the thread on it. Then I know that I need something 3D that my blind friends can feel. So I bought foam sticker and I stuck it on my board. And then I closed my eyes and I felt, oh, I know what spots are the correct spots for me to go in. Great, so you made your coding really easy, right? You went from computer to book to board game? Yes. Who helped you make your board? How did you go about doing that? My sweet grandpa helped me cut the board and then I attached foam sticker on it. And then what about the code pieces themselves? How did you make them 3D or touchable? Well, I took the code pieces to Mr. Jeff at the Makerspace. He helped me 3D print my code blocks. And uh, did you create any kind of a um, cheat sheet or a book for your blind friends to know what to do with it? Yes, I created a Brittle Coded cheat sheet. And what I mean by Brittle Coded is I made my code blocks on a piece of paper and Miss Rita from the Blind Community, Cent Community Center helped me Brittle Code it. And I mean by that, white grill on it. Great, so you got all the stuff ready and now how did you make sure that your code pieces wouldn't fall off? I stuck Velcro underneath each code piece so that it would stick. Awesome, and then you used some magnets for the characters? Yes, I stuck magnets under each character so they would stick on the board. Who helped you test your game? My blind friends. They tested if they could feel it enough. And then, where did you take all your game? Where all did you take your game to? Well, I took my game to five maker fairs. You know what a maker fair is? It's a cool place of learning and inventions. And what did you do there at the maker fair? The maker fairs were nice enough to let me speak on stage. Ah, just like the Young Innovator Fair, huh? Cool. And what did you do at the maker fair other than speaking and uh, showing your game? Did you have a place for the kids to play? Yes, I had a booth that would teach kids to code at the maker fair. And what did the kids say? I thought that only our blind friends would like it because it's only designed for them. But then I saw that the kids who can't see still loved it. Great. So can you explain what the code is on that screen there for me? Yeah. So Cody Loss is in the bear's home. She has to go in the bed. Baby bear's bed. So it's move up two steps. Then it's move left three steps. Move up four steps. Now we have an if then condition. It's where the character asks a question and the character will perform an act based on the answer. So the question is if we're touching Daddy Bear's bed, say too hard. And then we have the else. That is another question for us to answer. Now, if we're touching Mama Bear's bed, say too soft. Else, if touching Baby Bear's bed, say just right. Stop the code. Oh, and we also have to end the loop before we stop the code. So end, stop, code. 
Great, so when your friends played with it, did they give you any ideas on how you can make your game better? Yes, they gave me plenty of ideas. Can you share some of them? Yes. For example, I can make my cone pieces light up. Or another one, I can paint it a little and make it more beautiful. So now, because you were using it both for kids who can see and our visually challenged friends, you had to make the code blocks look pretty, right? Yes. So here is this improved version of the StoryBot, which you can actually check out at our booth. We've been using this a lot and having fun playing it. And Hira, where did you take this? Well, I took it to the Young Inventor Challenge. And I competed against a lot of cool and smart kids. And I won a four-foot robot called Mechanoid T15KS. And what does your robot do? Well, it teaches me how fun and simple robotics can be. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I can tell it walk with me. Or I can tell it motion control. Great. And what, what happened when you were in Chicago to collect your uh, mechanoid and participate at the Young Inventor Challenge? Well, I was eating, eating, enjoying hot chocolate and I saw a homeless friend. He was sitting outside in the cold and I felt really sad. And so I thought, hey, what if I teach my homeless friends how to code? Then they'll get a job and then they can buy a home. Great, so what is your what are your plans next? What do you want to do with code? Well, I need your help. Help me change the world with code. Join me at littlecodeninja.com. That's great. And do you have a message for the children who want to code and want to invent stuff and be creative? Yes, thank you. Remember, you're never too young to do anything. You can do anything at any age. It does not matter. And for your invention, Keda, did you do it yourself or did you get a lot of help? Can you tell us about that? I had a lot of help. I'll tell you some of my mentors. Mr. Jeff at the Makerspace, Mr. Patrick, Miss Rita, and all sorts of people. And of course, my mommy and daddy, especially my mom, because she teaches me a lot of smart, cool things. What do you really like about coding and inventing? Well, I can solve problems and I can make anything I want. For example, stories, books, science, reading, math, anything technically. That's a lot of fun and you want everyone to do it? Yes! I love it! Thank you everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us? We're happy to take it. questions at all? What if, you, what if you're building up it homemade and you don't have any instructions? Well, it would be hard. I would have to figure out the robotics. It would be tricky. That's a good question. Good asking trick questions. <laughs> any more trick questions? Thank you very much.
Ja, ja.